Hello, everybody, and welcome to the place where you scratch on YouTube, on Facebook. Welcome to the quintessential casino. This, the Hoosier State, the Indiana edition of quintessential casino. I'm Joel Gertner, and we are going to be playing four different games today. Uh, we have $20 worth of indiana scratch off lottery tickets and so we have four different games within that twenty dollars we have a two dollar game called double match we have a three dollar game called cash adventure we have a five dollar game called money multiplier and then this long one right here that looks like a cvs receipt this is a ten dollar ticket called windfall so we have these four different games so we've got quite a bit of playing to do, so let's start now. I've got my trusty... Scott Forbes says, good luck, Joel. Thank you, Scott. Good luck to all of us, because this is to benefit the greater good. Society, common man, uh, people who need it, and uh, that's the goal, is for one of these tickets, one of these days... I mean, we'll do it with any ticket that wins, but one of these tickets, one of these days, man, if we hit a jackpot or even a sub-jackpot or on some of these $20 or $30 tickets, $10 tickets, if we hit a sub-sub-jackpot, doesn't matter. If we hit something nice and healthy money that can matter, we plan on not only keeping a little bit of that maybe for ourselves, who knows, I might get crazy and give it all away, but certainly every time we win, we give something or all of it to charity. So, um, and thank you guys very much for supporting that. We even had one gentleman a couple episodes ago. We're in the process of getting it to him. I kept a losing lottery ticket because he said, even if the ticket loses, go ahead and sign it, autograph it, and it'll be $10 for St. Jude. We have that ticket. We're in the process of sending that off. That's $10 to St. Jude for a losing lottery ticket. Imagine if something like this bad mamma jamma comes in victorious joe Bruin said windfall is a winner i feel it thank and you joe aubrey fowler said win a million brother thank you aubrey and aubrey fowler From said when wins the next auction in october but we were talking about the auction 15 minutes ago squeeze and i on that couch over there that she'd have to press the button and toggle the switch for you to see but we were sitting over there saying the auction hasn't happened yet when do we do the auction and i said when we do the auction is up to you so as soon as squeeze lets me know what the best date would be and she's great with stuff like marketing and she's pr expert publicity but she's great with stuff like marketing and advertising as well so we're going to figure out the logistics we haven't forgotten about the auction it was gnawing at me just 15 minutes ago that this auction should have happened already. We originally, I think, targeted Labor Day or around Labor Day, and unfortunately that didn't happen because September has been a very, very busy month here for us at the ranch, so to speak. It's not a ranch. Let's it's get started. Um, let's get started. Uh, I have uh, pennies from 19... I don't have a 1909, but I do have pennies from 1910 to 1940. And then I've got pennies from 1941 to about 1969. Somebody throw a year at me. Nick French said hi, and Aubrey Fowler said, let me know if you need more items. I think we're Thank good you, on Aubrey. items right we're, now. For this one, we're good. Maybe to start us off for the next one, and hopefully it won't be six to seven months, whatever, in between. Um, whichever When we do the auction, hopefully it won't be another six or seven months until the next one, as it was from our February baseball card one until now we really really want to do quite a few of these a year uh so thank you we might hit you up for that inventory but um we made a purchase with mr coliseum he took care of us uh between what we put in which is going to be our donation we're not going to take any of that back from the bids that come in between what we put in what he put in a little bit extra by giving us more than he usually would for that amount uh, so we donated, and so to speak, he donated already. And we have uh, a $50 donation pre-auction that's already been given. Unofficially, I have another gentleman that said, let me know when the auction's happening, and uh, and I'll take care of you guys. Uh, not take care of us, but help us take care of St. Jude. Uh, that's that's our giving. That's Aubrey Fowler said, and hopefully we can hang at Mania next year. Uh, that would be great. If you're going to Tampa, yeah, man, let's put that together. Let us know offline, uh, and absolutely, for sure. And Dalton Glass said quintessential stud muffin. Thank you, Dalton. Okay, let's pick a coin. Has anybody, yeah, uh, go ahead and pick, pick a, a year. year from 10 to about 69 or so. 
from 10 to about 69 or so. Yeah. First person we have some to, from the, You know what? We have some from the 70s, too. First person to comment, that's the one we use. First person to comment and pick a year from 1910 to 1977 is going to take Scott Forbes it. said 50. 50. Baby boomer. Post-war. The year my dad was born. The year your dad was born. We have all three of them. We have the 1950D Denver, which was the most minted that that year. We have the 1950, the standard. But then we also have the most rare of the 1950s, the S series, which I think is San Francisco. The one that there's only about 118 million ever made. Goodness knows how many are still in circulation. But um, that's what this is. This is the San Francisco... Can't really see. So next year, this one will be 70 years old. Okay, let's get it going. All right. So let's start off with Double Match. I'll show it to you first, and then I'll read. I got these, I want to say, at the airport in Indianapolis when I was in for the Juggalos for uh, Rudy and ICP doing Gathering of the Juggalos. When was that? Was that like around August 1st? Something like late that. July, early yeah, August. Late July. So we're looking at two months. Two months ago, I was in Indiana, and at the airport coming home, I got these four tickets using my random number generator to pick which ones to get. And uh, and this was uh, the most affordable of them, the two dollar one double match. Double match. There's two ways to play and two ways to win. First, match any of your numbers to either of the winning numbers and win prize shown. Match three like prize amounts in the Your Numbers area, and win that amount. So it's a combination of both those style of scratch-off games. You're trying to match your number to the winning number, but even if you don't match to any winning numbers, among your ten numbers, if three of them match, that's enough to get you paid on what that amount is. So pretty simple, hybrid, I guess that's why it's called Double Match. Aubrey Fowler said good luck. Thank you, Aubrey. For the A in Aubrey, we'll scratch the first spot. And in spot number one, Michael Jordan would be proud. We've got a 23. I haven't scratched the winning numbers yet, huh? No, scratch the winning numbers. No! I hate when you do it that way. For the F in Fowler, which is the sixth letter of the alphabet, we're going to go right underneath the 23, and we're going to scratch the sixth spot. And we're going to see what we get. We're going to elongate the suspense. We got a 42. So we've got a 23 and a 42. You want me to scratch one of the winning numbers now? Let's do that. Let's scratch the one on the right. Corey J. Whitetrack said, if you win the most available, what would you buy? We're not buying anything. We're donating it. Yeah, we donate like most or all. Um, to St. Jude's. Yeah, yeah. Small wins we donate all of. Uh, we haven't had a win greater than $10 yet. But if we were to have like a jackpot style win... Um, <laughs> we would give a healthy, healthy, substantial, significant part of it away. Um, I would still probably, I don't know. I'm, uh, 39 is a winning number. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. 39. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's scratch off a couple more of our numbers. Chris D. Caravalho said, but did you ever scratch and We've sniff? We've got an eight. Smells like latex, and that's uh. Corey J. White Track said I'd keep that shit. <laughs> yeah, not the whole thing. Would you a jackpot? What about this windfall here? This windfall here. They don't even tell you what you could win up to. Let me see. Oh no! You know what? This is a this is one where they want a lot of people to win. It's a ten dollar ticket. But instead of having like a $3 million prize, $5 million prize, what would usually be the standard prize for a $10 ticket, the most you could win is five. The prizes are between $20 and $500. So the goal on these is that they want to give away as many prizes as possible, not large prizes. Problem but is, is how do we get... A, huh? How are we going to cash out? How are we going to get to Indiana? We'll figure that out too. <laughs> so, so then we would look to the $5 ticket, Money Multiplier, the jackpot on that one is $100,000. What a great problem to have if we win $100,000 live on YouTube tonight and we have to figure out exactly what all to do with it. 
Um, Corey J. White Truck said, I donate a little but pay my house off. And Aubrey Fowler said, it should smell like winning. <laughs> yeah. It smells like... It smells like uh, latex and money, which I guess is something you'd expect the quintessential stud muffin to say. Uh, a scent that he's, uh, I guess, his boudoir is somewhat familiar with. Um, so we've got an 8 as one of our numbers. And we've got a 38 as one of our numbers, which is close to 39. But close doesn't count in double match. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Joseph Dowd said, come on, hookers and blow, and that's just for squeeze. <laughs> um, thank you, but I'm going to pass on that. I will consider it, uh, <laughs> but nah, I don't. I think St. Jude's and a house, uh, St. Jude's and uh, and padding for the family savings. Uh, even the stock market, man. You know, everything's on such a dip now in these last Corey few Corey J. Weitrek that, uh, said that lottery ticket looks like it took blue chew. <laughs> yeah, it's, it smells like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 47 is a number that we've got. Uh, 31. 4. Let's scratch this other winning number. I told you. Jeez. It's a 35. Ugh. So the winning numbers are 35 and 39. We've scratched 7 of our 10 places. We don't have a 35 or a 39 yet, and we also don't have a match among our numbers. So we're really up against it. It's not looking good. I'm going to scratch here in the 9 spot. This is a 27. We still don't have a match. I'm going to scratch the 10 spot. That's a 43. And because we still don't have a match, I think this last spot needs to either match the winning 35 or the winning 39. Because anything else that it is, if it, it wouldn't be enough to push us over the limit on matching our own because you need to match three like, and all nine of these that are here are un- like each other. So we need the 35 or the 39. And it's a 13. So we're going to QC this in our mm. off time. But I believe we have no matches to the winning numbers. We have no three matches among our numbers. We're going to set it aside and look again later. If you guys see a discrepancy, let us know. But we're going to call that one a pass. Joseph Dowd said, would you buy Bitcoin with it? <laughs> My Bitcoin story is that as a birthday present about five years ago in 2014, I had asked for a Bitcoin. It was $500 at the time. And Squeeze said, do you know what a Bitcoin really is? And because it was so new, and because it's unreal to begin with, to an extent... Uh, I, I confess that I didn't exactly know what a Bitcoin was. She convinced me not to spend $500 on something that you don't know what it is. And of course, as we know, Bitcoin ran up to what, $20,000. Um, and now it's plummeting. Uh, Corey so, J. Whitrack said, I was talking about that long ticket, but the ping ticket is not about the blue chew. <laughs> okay. The, hopefully this one's on Blue Chew uh, to the tune of $100,000. Uh, it's blue, so that's part of it right there. Dalton Castle said... Dalton Glass. Dalton Castle, oh my God. <laughs> Dalton Glass said, miss the old ECW promos. Thank you. Aubrey Fowler said, which state has the Ric Flair scratch-offs? North Carolina, North maybe. Carolina, mm-hmm. Chris De Car Carvalho. Have, did you ever consider investing the winning tickets into new neck braces and bow ties? <laughs> no. You know, we sell those at some of your yeah, shows. Yeah, those are available. You can get your very own neck brace and bow tie with a b beautiful sock to go with it. Yep. Corey J. White Truck said, I feel like Ric Flair and lottery tickets is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, there are... 18 spots to scratch on this cash adventure game three dollar ticket there are 18 <sighs> spots to scratch and there's also these two prize boards the one on the top and the one on the bottom and you'll see a lot of icons on these you'll see different indiana jones and temple of doom looking stuff horseshoes hand grenades not perhaps but perhaps you'll see other things like daggers and ropes and skulls and that kind of thing the like um i'm guessing that uh we're gonna see symbols when we scratch these 18 and we're gonna have to match these other symbols like a bingo board and if we can get a line of four across that kind of thing we're gonna win the prize for that line am i right each line is played separately 
Uh, the lines go vertical and horizontal. See the back for play instructions on the back. Is Scratch the winning symbols area, then scratch the corresponding symbols found on each grid. When you match all symbols in any horizontal or vertical line, win the prize shown for that line, and each line is played separately. Joseph Dowd said, My cousin is a meth head and in 2012 told me to buy Bitcoin as some alien told him to. Thought he was nuts. <laughs> Dalton Glass said Dalton. Smart alien. Dalton Glass said Dalton That's Castle. That's banana. Let me tell you something. That story's bananas. Wait a minute. That story's bananas. It works if you get it in the frame. Okay. You got it? Got it. Yeah. That story's bananas. And we're going to scratch some bananas right here. They are in line 14. What were you saying, Squeeze? Never mind. What were you saying? Somebody was, Dalton Glass was saying... Dalton Castle rocks, too. Dalton Castle rocks, too. Dalton Castle comes out to a variant of I Want It All by Queen, which was my first ever ring music when I started in the business at age 16 as Joey Jaguar. The Aubrey, more Aubrey you know. Fowler says no whammies. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, and... Coin! We're talking about Bitcoin, and instead we've got Bananas Coin. I have to focus when you do that. Ah, well, just take my quick. word for it. It's a coin. Krista Carvalho said, you can always invest in Bitcoin together with Val Venus. And Randy Stein said, Happy New Year's, guys, Randy. Happy New Year's. Shana Tova, Randy. You know what's cool? What's cool? Squeeze and my lucky number nine. Line nine is a vertical line in the bottom grid, which means instead of four spots, it's got three three spots only to win the prize and coin and bananas are right on top of each other in line nine do mm -hmm. you see it there yep which means all we need to unveil in these next 16 spots is what looks like a knapsack a rucksack uh some sort of uh some sort of bag baby some sort of backpack all we need to do is get that, and we will win the prize for line nine. So wish us luck for that one and for all of the others. Christy Carvalho said, did Joey Jaguar ever cross paths with Jet Jaguar? Did not. Did not cross paths with Jet Jaguar. Tiger. Corey J.Y. Track, where'd you get the Mario Brothers t-shirt? And what's the best Mario Brothers game in your opinion? Uh, I'll let Squeeze handle the first part. Uh, the Mario Brothers t-shirt was purchased at Old Navy last year. As part of a? Anniversary present. From you to me. Mm -hmm. Aubrey Fowler said, get it. Oh, and they want to know what's your best Mario... What's the best Mario Brothers game, in your opinion? The one that I've played the most is the original, just, you know, based on... Uh, I'm 44, so I was born in 75. So the one that was the most all the rage when I was the most, you know, all the rage to, to see it and play it was the original Super Mario Brothers around 1985, 86, whenever it was. Uh, yeah, in, with the blue Nintendo cartridge in the original first Nintendo system. And I, I might have played a game or two of one or two other variations. I think I downloaded Super Mario Run for the phone, wound up just taking it off the phone, I don't remember. But uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the original. I, I hope it doesn't date me. I hope I don't sound old because of it. But, uh, but the one from the 80s, I think, was the best one, the first one. Aubrey Fowler says, you guys are the greatest, by the way. Thank you, Aubrey. So we've got Tiger, Lantern, Coin, and Bananas. And just like Coin and Bananas are in the same line, Tiger and Lantern are on line seven together. So, could be doing worse. The elephant in the room is located, got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't. Well, you said yeah. Well, you move too fast. You move too slow. Aubrey Fowler said, and Cult of Kayfabe represent. Oh, yeah. KOK, baby. Uh, just put up on KOK earlier tonight about this, this show that you're watching right now. And also just put up um, in recent days, I think, about my podcast. If you're watching this, please listen to the 69-minute Eargasm podcast wherever you get your podcasts that you love. 
Disco Inferno is our guest this week, and it's a great episode. It's uh, off to the races. It is our most downloaded so far in the early uh, days by day. It's and really this week you're going to be episode. potentially recording with a ECW alumni as well. But we're yes, not going to say who. We're not going to say who, but stay in touch here on Facebook. Stay in touch with my social media and you'll know which ECW legend I record with midweek so that you'll know which one we hope to release this coming Friday as the first Smackdown on Fox goes off the air so a little friday night hour plus for you to enjoy podcast wise uh but we'll let you know uh who it's with but check out the disco inferno one which is great which is out now uh and check out the other 10 or 20 um behind that one Corey j white Trek, did you try did you play pro wrestling on nes starman was my favorite but who was yours i did i liked them all i liked starman uh king corn karn uh fighter hayabusa uh all of them all of them loved it Mountains. Corey J. Whitrack, I love Disco Inferno. Oh, you gotta listen to the episode, Corey. If you haven't already. If you have, please let people know. Uh, and if you could go to your podcast provider if you haven't yet, and please rate the episode if you liked it. Like, comment, like, rate. Like, comment, all that stuff helps us. Subscribe. Believe it, or not, believe it or not, it really does. Helps with the rankings. With the rankings, with the Algorithm. Randy Stein said, Joel, if someone watches NXT on a Wednesday evening and you DV, I guess DVR instead of DVD, DVR AEW sign simultaneously, will it actually, for rating purposes, show your viewing reach? So I know the answer to this. So DVR ratings are accumulated within, I believe it is, five days of it being DVR'd. So once you DVR something... Um, if you DVR it on a Wednesday, you need to watch it by Sunday for it to count for the ratings. Yes, that's fair. That sounds about, that jibes <laughs> with my information as well. Where's the flower? We just, the necklace I found, but the flower, is it possible that some of these aren't here? I guess so. It's weird, man. There's a flower. That would have to be the case, right? That some of them wouldn't be here? Yeah. That's. I mean, there's only two ways to, to get you to be losing as part of these games, and that's, I guess, one of them. You're welcome, Randy. Uh, Christy Carvalho. Yeah, I can't find the flower, so for now I'm just going to leave it alone. Christy Carvalho said, Any memories of the real-life Hayabusa from his appearances in ECW? I didn't get to spend much time with him that day. And looking back, I wish I did because it was one of his only times in the States. And it was uh, his, I mean, it was the only time I was in the same room with him. I, I wish I could tell you I had memories of or with Hayabusa. Uh, no, we were doing our own thing that night. And so was he. And, um, and I was in as a manager. I wasn't calling the match. So, no, I, I loved the fact that he was there. Loved the match. Um, I, I apologize. I wish. That's... Uh, That'd be great. Gold. Starting to gnaw at me with this flower, you know, because there's like... There's 28 symbols. So figure, even if you... Since they're only giving you 18 to scratch, figure you could still lose even if... You know what I mean? Like, this flower should be on here. Where is it? Weird. All right, let's see if we come Fowler, do you have the Pac-Man Scratchers? Do we have Pac-Man Scratchers in our state? I haven't seen them, but they may be seasonal. Who knows? Things rotate. Mm. Corey J. Whitechuck, who is your best friend while in ECW? I, I tried to get along with everybody. I don't even know if I had one. Uh, who did you ride with most? No one? That was also, yeah, there's no answer to that either. Um, we used yeah. to change up. Yeah, it was, we were all family, so it was like, you know, who needs a ride kind of thing. I mean, at least, yeah. Aubrey Fowler's going to send us some. Oh, Pac -Man scratches. that's sweet. Thank you. Um, In the same category with flower is binoculars, because I've scratched binoculars, but I don't see binoculars. That makes it even harder to win, man. You, there's 28 of these. I don't like this game. And they game. only give you 18 this of them, and then they fun. give you ones that are off the board. That's not fun. There's a camera. 
which I also don't see. We're going to have to QC this one later. Okay. Squeeze is going to wind up being like, look at this thing. That's a flower, and that's the camera. And I'll be like, but it looks like a key and a half. I'll look at it when you get on to the next one. Yeah, I don't see a camera here. Emerald. I see the emerald. Oh, my gosh. How can you miss it? And I will tell you that the emerald, along with its other jewelry friend necklace and its non-jewelry friend elephant, are in the same line with their jewelry friend Don't ring. Move. Do you see that vertical line that is only missing ring? Hold on, I'm looking. Which one? Ring. I don't see ring. On the right side? You're right on my right. I don't know. Well, trust me, there's a line that has <laughs> necklace, elephant, and emerald, and if we get a ring... If they're going to make symbols that aren't on the board, they should make these symbols look a little bit more distinct. Christy Car Here, Lizard, Lizard, Lizard. Christy Carvalho said, Will 2020 be the year of the stub muffin as NWA, AEW, MLW continue to gain momentum? Well, if you would like to see Joel at any of those promotions, you should tell them so. To the left of the mountains, that's not a lizard, right? That looks more like a scorpion. Look at it through there. Yes, it looks like a scorpion. Okay. Then I will or a lobster, it. even. Right. So I will not scratch it as a lizard for now. Backpack. What if I told you we've got a winner for the first time in a few episodes of this? Woo! Our first two episodes were winners or break even. And then since then, we've been in a rut. And we've played at least, I think, five shows without a winning ticket. But the fact that we just scratched backpack and it being in the same line with bananas and coin means that we are winning a prize that I'd like to think is at least break even $3. Would we take the $3 back that I spent and put in the machine in the airport in Indianapolis? Absolutely not. That would be $3 we'd have to find somebody in Indiana to help us out with, and we'd have to find a way to get that $3 to St. Jude. So hopefully St. Jude has at least $3 donation from this Tonight, right now, on Quintessential Casino. Corey J. Whitechuck, does your state have the weekly grand? That's my favorite lottery ticket in Texas. Ah, uh, weekly grand. $1,000 a week. for We have win for life. Yeah. So we have something we have like 1500 $1, It's $1,500 a week, I think. There are different, depending on how much the ticket costs, there yeah. are like three different increments of win for life. Um, we have something like it, yeah. David Lux, do Unless, you have Unless, a... in some states, you know what they do? There's a TV show. There's a little five-minute segment that goes along with it where you could spin a wheel or whatever, right? But it's on TV, interactive. We don't have that. We Our numbers get called out on TV, but in quick, like, one-minute kind of blasts where they just show you, them picking the numbers and that's it. We don't have any games where, like, somebody walks on stage and they play. You know, not that. We don't do that. Sorry, but... David Lux, do you have a P.O. box ad or address? Because I would like to donate some lottery tickets from Pennsylvania. Thank you. We uh, Thank message you. We tried Joel. To up in New Jersey yesterday message Joel there. after uh, this. Yeah, and, please find me offline. We would love to accept. Uh, Corey J. White Truck said, "Sounds similar. It's a scratch off." Joel, uh, Chris, Christy Carvalho said, "Joel, does pineapple belong on pizza?" He's gonna say no. I'll eat it, but I, I mean, it's not, I'd prefer not, you know, the same way a hot dog is not a sandwich. I've had enough sandwiches. And I've oh, had yeah, enough that's a big dogs, thing, right? Right? I mean, why would you need to ham fist a hot dog into being a sandwich, even if it technically is one? See, the um, difference is a hot dog can be a hot dog without the bun. So true. that makes it not a sandwich. Well, I guess what heats, I guess what makes it a hot dog is that it's inside that bun. I guess when you take no. it out of the bun, it's a frankfurter. No, it's still not. Because the sandwich it's is still the frankfurter. Hot. They're still both... Yeah, that's parlance. That <laughs> kind of depends how you measure that. Aubrey like. Fowler, come to Florida for Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Aubrey, feel free to reach out to the people at that organization and tell let them you want them Joel to come. Know. Let them know. Corey J. Whitetrack... Brace will travel. Corey J. Whitetrack said, Pineapple absolutely belongs on pizza. And David Lux said, Here I will do that, sun. thank you. Here comes the sun. And finally... Fire! With the sun comes. My God, fire. we still have two more tickets. I 
I don't think we got this bug, or this boot, or this globe, or this gorilla. I don't think we got the pickaxe, or the rope, or the chest. So that takes care of the bottom grid. I don't think we got a lobster, or a scorpion, whatever that is. We didn't get a map, we didn't get a ring, or a key, or a shovel. We didn't get money, like coin bags, like a bag of coins, a money bag. And we didn't get um, that other jewel. What's the pink one? Is that a... Uh, well, if it's not an emerald, what would you call that pink one up there? Ruby? Uh, it would have to be redder to be a ruby? I know garnets are red, and I see rubies are red. That's pink or purple. Maybe it's an amethyst? Something like amethyst that. Amethyst is purple. Purple? That could be an amethyst or something like that. We didn't get that. But what we did get is um, we have a winner, I think. We do have a prize in line nine, which, like I said, hopefully it's at least $3 because it's a $3 ticket. They do. That's how they do it here in New York, is that you can't really win less than you put into the game. Um, you hear the cat meowing. <laughs> Uh, Corey J. White Track. Sonic has amazing hot dogs with all different kinds of crazy toppings, so pizza is no different. Aubrey Fowler said spam does not belong on pizza. And Ryan Jones said, well, well, well. Yes, well, chaos. well, well, Ryan Jones. Spam belongs if you're in Hawaii on everything. Um, <laughs> Kat is meowing her precious little head off. We still have the two longer games yeah. to play. We're going to play okay, those so relatively Okay, so did quickly. we win? What did we win? We did. Do you see it there on the bottom? In line nine, with the backpack, the coins, and the bananas, yes, you'll see that we won three dollars. Three dollars back on our three dollars. So St. Jude Children's Hospital is three dollars richer for it, and we move on to our five dollar game, which, ironically enough, even though there's a ten dollar game, is our biggest chance for big money. To I don't know. Now that we know that this windfall has the largest prize of five hundred dollars, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. Should we play the $5 game first, or should we play the $10 game first? On the $10 game, you can win up to $500, but there's lots of prizes. But you know what? That's not even true, because it says on the back, the overall odds of winning are 1 in 7. The overall odds of winning here are 1 in 4. It's a $5 game where you could win up to $100,000. I will let the people decide. First vote takes it. What's wrong with the cat? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the $10 ticket is the blue chew ticket. Go with the $10 ticket. Okay. Um, Ryan Jones said, well, well, well. Randy Stein said, I've never heard you tell us when was the very first wrestling show you attended and who was there with you, a big fan of in your, who were you a big fan of in the early years? I was a big fan of Jake the Snake Roberts and uh, freak guys like Kamala, George the Animal Steel, and The Missing Link, and talkers like Roddy Piper and Jesse Ventura, and managers like all of the heel managers... And ring announcers like Howard Finkel. That's what I watched for. And Aubrey uh, Fowler said... The first show that I went to was with my buddy Rob and his dad. We sat in the front row of the top section. So like the 200s or whatever. We sat in the front row of it by the, by the um, banister. Um, so we had a great view. Um, I brought binoculars. Hey, it was um, the 80s. And that's what you did because you couldn't just look at it through your phone and zoom in. And uh, it was the January 1986 Madison Square Garden show, which had a very well-known main event. It was Hogan defending for the first time against Savage. And in that match, Savage actually wins by countout. On the outside, Hogan was going to hit Savage. Savage pulls Elizabeth in front of him, so Hogan doesn't hit, of course, either of them. Hogan winds up getting counted out. Savage wins. So Savage doesn't, of course, win the title. But two years exactly into Hogan's run, I believe it was the first time in those two years that Hulk Hogan lost a match, technically, if I count it, at Madison Square Garden. So a heel went over against Hogan in the main event. And, uh, and that's it. There you go. I was uh, 10 years old. Aubrey Fowler said, in the end, give us the donation link, if you will, Dusty Voice. In the Dusty <laughs> Voice. Uh... Corey J. White tried to play ten dollars. My dusty, my dusty's terrible. Uh, Axel Rotten did a great. Corey J. White tried said, "Missing Link has a really good book," and Randy Stein said, "Thank you, buddy." 
I've heard about Missing Link's book. I got to get that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are 25 different numbers here. 25 prizes that match them on the $10 ticket, the windfall. And uh, Squeeze has set up the phone against uh Squeeze has done something very, very smart and stepped away for a moment. Not that stepping away was smart, but I mean she has finagled the phone so that I'm now kind of in frame and she is not having to hold the phone. Uh, there's 25 coins here, numbers, prizes. There's also, and there are five or six winning numbers, there's also a $50 cash spot, a $100 cash spot, and a $500 cash spot. Most you can win on this is 500 but the least you can win is 20 so it's a $10 ticket, but you can't win $10. If you win, the least it's going to be is 20 So nobody just breaks even. You either lose or you make money on this one. Aubrey Fowler said, I got $5 on number six. You got five on six? Well, the winning numbers are 45, nine, which is, if we had to put $5, we'd put five on nine, 14, 20, and my birthday is 920, so that's in there. 28. And 33. I went to Las Vegas for the first time in May. I put $50 on 8, $50 on 9. Came up blackjack, 21. I was back three weeks later for StarCast, so my second time in Vegas was also in May. I put $25, if I remember correctly, on 8, and $25 on 9, and instead of it coming up Blackjack, or 8 or 9, it didn't come up Blackjack 21, it came up 22. So that's the deal, and that was my $150 that I've uh, invested in Las Vegas so far, and uh, both of them very, very quick walks around the park. Corey J. Whitrek said, I'm jealous my first ever main event live was Ultimate Warrior versus Papa Shango. Had to watch <laughs> Warrior sell voodoo. <laughs> and Kenny Casanova said, we need number to win seven. big money. Yes, Kenny, number 17. And Aubrey Fowler says, if a, number if, 57. A, if a six shows up, I got $5 on it. All right, $5 if one of these 25 coins is a six. So far, it started with a seven, and then 17, 57, 39. Uh, none of those are a match with our winning numbers. Now I have to remember that we've got to match one of our winning numbers, or for $5, we've got to match a 6. Uh, 31, no good. Koi White said, no what's good. your favorite pro wrestling match ever? 59, no good. I like Liger Sano from 90, which was the first time I ever saw Liger, so that sticks out. Uh, the first ever great match that I saw was Savage Steamboat in 87 at WrestleMania 3. Uh, there are so many that, like, for like, there's a Midnight Express squash match that I love for the way they destroy and just emotionally eviscerate the jobbers. Like, it, it, it kind of depends. Depends, yeah, I don't know. It's like pizza, right? It's all mm -hmm. good. Kenny Casanova said, if we short, snort the scratch dust. Snort the scratch dust, We right? will all be winners. I guess. I don't know, man. I really, I think they make it out of latex. 26, no good. 52, no good. 30, no good. Let's break up the monotony of scratching those coins, and let's scratch the $50 cash spot. $50 cash spot, crown. What you need to find is a stack of dollars. In these cash spots, find a stack of bills symbol and win the price run. So the crown's not going to do it. Let's get back to the numbers. 55, 47, 1. What? Let me know if it's in frame. What do you see under the 1? Under which one? I... What's the bottom number you see? Six. Pony up, Aubrey Fowler. You called it, Aubrey Fowler, and we thank you for your $5 donation to St. Jude Children's Hospital. Aubrey Fowler, what do you think of Liger current unmasking? And then he said, I heard a six. <laughs> no, number 42 right after it that's not here. Uh, Liger unmasking. You know... 
New Japan was at Manhattan Center last night, even. And I was across the bridge in the shadows and the footprints of New York City in Wayne, New Jersey, working a different wrestling show, Go Pro, Go Professional Wrestling. Um, when you ask about Liger unmasking, I hate to be ignorant, but is this something you're asking about that has already happened? Or are you wondering if it's something that should happen? Because if he has unmasked, it is unbeknownst to me, and, and I feel um, uninformed. Chris de Carvalho said, who do you think can scratch tickets faster, you or Joey Styles? I'm slow. I, I, I do everything like it's God's last gift. So I'm going to, if I had to bet, I would say Joey Styles can do nine out of ten things faster than I can. Corey J. Whitetrack, favorite money? I know the one out of ten that he'd probably finish than me faster at it. What? What? I know the one out of ten thing that he would probably finish faster than I did. Corey J. Whitetrack, favorite like money-related wrestling character, but you can't pick Ted DiBiase. Michael Wall Street. Maybe. Corey um, J. Whitetrack, Aubrey Fowler, haha, called it. Aubrey Fowler, just recently happened, has Joker makeup. Oh, wow, really? 27. 22. Let's scratch the $100 cash spot. Do we have a stack of bills there? No, we have a horseshoe. See, me saying that there's no horseshoes on these cards necessarily, but necessarily sometimes there's necessarily a horseshoe. Poor J. Whitrek. He has unmasked. He's in face paint. 25. And it's kind of an alter ego like Finn or Bray Wyatt. That's cool. I'm all for it. Christy Carvalho said, oh my God. He wrestled in Calgary as Keiichi Yamada. So he's wrestled, you know, he didn't start out in a mask. Jushin Liger wasn't his first gimmick. So he's been fresh-faced. He's been masked, so if he wants to do face paint, uh, pay a little homage to great Muda, great Kabuki, and all the great Japanese that have done face paint, uh, I'm all for it. Number 13. Number 5. Number 38. Number 37. Let's scratch the $500 cash spot. It is a gold bar, not a stack of bills. We have two coins left here. We're trying to match one of our six winning numbers. With a 10, we don't do it. And with a 3, we don't do it. I'm going to hold this as steady oh, wow. as I can, still being excited from the fact that we have a $3 winner. I'm going to hold don't this. Don't move. Uh, I'm okay. scanning slowly so people can look. All you great people out there, we're scanning for you. Please scan for us. If you see, with the exception of the six that matched Aubrey Fowler's prediction, if you see that any of our 25 numbers match any of the six winning numbers, please let us know. We didn't win in the cash spots because we don't have a stack of bills for any of the three symbols. So we're just looking at the 25 numbers to match the six numbers. Aubrey Fowler said Kabuki was a badass, and Corey J. Whitrack said, My phone is at 10%, so I gotta roll out. Keep doing these, Joel. I love them. Corey, stay in touch and ask about this last ticket, and we'll let you know what happened. It's the $5 ticket where we could win up to $100,000. Thank you, Corey, for watching. We try to make these as quick as possible. We don't try to make them this long, but thank everybody for watching, and we got this one last game to play the money multiple. Aubrey Fowler said, I see two sixes, so I'm in for $10. Little double vision. I mean, St. Jude certainly would uh, would love the one the of the extra sixes money. is probably the winning number. No, no, there's only one six on here. But if that's Aubrey's way of being Aubrey, we'll show it to you one more time just so that you know for sure that uh, obviously there wouldn't be two sixes at least in the same line. But he's a good guy, so if he says he sees two sixes, I take his word for it. Catch me offline. We'd be happy to take a donation or not. But if you're donating, we'd be happy to take it for one six, two sixes, whatever you want. Randy Stein said, one of my first MSG shows had Bruno defending his title in the early Jealous. 70s. Jealous. It was on a Saturday evening Jealous. during the summer. As you know, most shows were on a Monday night. On this Saturday night, Bruno wrestled in his... In the first match on the show, as the ring announcer said, he had a family emergency. Oh, my God. Two hours later, he wrestled Killer Kowalski in Boston Gardens. Nice. That's fun. Look how they handled that. Ah, oh, gosh, jealous. That's a great first show, too. Christy Cavajo, any memories of Rick Bogner, RIP, from his yes. brief time in ECW? Yes, I remember him. He did a couple of shows as uh, Slice and Dice Ramirez. Um, 
similar to Hayabusa in the sense that, I mean, I probably spent a little bit more time around him, but um, just, you know, it was a short run, and uh, I really didn't get to, I don't think I rode with him, I don't think I ate with him, I don't think I really got to spend significant time with him, other than, hey, how you doing, shake the hands backstage, uh, but I do remember that he was a great guy, he, uh, he wasn't into him, you know, he was just down to earth, and, you know, that, that's all I could say about him. Corey J. White Truck said, I like the length. And Aubrey Fowler says 26 has a 6 in it. <laughs> Up to you, man. So, hey, 626 is my dad's birthday, but... Uh, Christy Cavarro, it doesn't have Joel's lucky number 69. There you go. And thank you for appreciating the length. That's what she said. Uh, and if you're donating the $5 twice, 5 and 5 for 6 and 26, I'm going to accept that um, for St. Jude and on behalf of you and my dad, who's got a birthday of 626. So, we'll play the money multiplier. The winning numbers are 67, 13, 63. Man, Indiana makes it tough. H high numbers, symbols that aren't on the grid. I mean, make it tough. 43. I've played some games in some easier states. These are some okay. tough ones. John and Vantolino said, I hope you're both well. Christy Carvalho said, Thank Joel you, likes the length and the girth. And Aubrey Fowler <laughs> said, next card, I've got $5 on number five. Aubrey's got five on five for this one. Um, it looks like there's 20 different numbers, but they probably go up to something like 70 or 75 because we've got a 67 as one of the winning numbers. Uh, we've got a 44 that doesn't match anything. We've got an 8. This thing is way shifted. We've got a 61. The actual numbers are far away, relatively, from where they should be. And like I was saying on a previous show, either the last one or the one before that, I had somebody once, and one of their lottery theories was that um, when it's like that, you either have a better chance or a worse chance of winning. I don't remember what their theory was, but... 46 does nothing for us. Carl P. Matthews, hopefully big win on this card. Thank you, Carl. Carl? Carl. So the only way to win is to match your number to the winning number, but then there is a multiplier. Under the prize, there's a multiplier, and the multiplier could be 2x, 5x, 10x, or 20x. Aubrey Fowler, there's no 5, just an 8. And a seven, we're getting closer to five, counting backwards, but there's no five yet. <laughs> you just scratched the five. No, I said eight, seven, and we're getting closer because we're counting six. backwards, right? So there's the six. Aubrey, you've already donated for more sixes than there were on the previous card, so don't feel that you have to shift your five to a six. But I think we just scratched like eight, seven, six in order. The Aubrey seven, Fowler eight, said next, uh, said uh, big money. Big money. We've got a 31. Aubrey Fowler says we count all the fives. Oh, we're going to count all the fives. Look at this guy. There's a 39. I think I know what he means by we count all the fives, and I'm not going to put any words in his mouth. We'll, uh, we'll play it by ear. 33, nothing. Watch, this one won't have any fives on it. That would be imagine? funny. Could you, and there's 20 of them. Could you imagine? 19. 18. 40. 17. 49. Well... Now you could for sure see two sixes if you want to, because there's a 66 right there. Got it? Mm-hmm. All right. We've got a 67 and a 63, but no 66. Aubrey Fowler said any fives that show up on this card gets $5. We've got a 60. Could you imagine we've there's scratched no, 16 numbers, single no and double digit. Not one and five. there's not a single five digit in here. Can you imagine? Mm. 48. Only three numbers left. Oh, no. 
Remember we've got the eight, the seven, and the six? Yeah. I just scratched a four. Oh, no. 30. And 16. No fives, Aubrey. We're going to QC that. I can't believe it. Not one no fives. fives. I can't believe this thing is stinky with sixes. This thing is up there with sevens and eights, but there's no five. We're going to QC the other three that weren't the $3 break even ticket, the $3 winner, but we've got that one. Um, if you're watching this, you know, I'm sure hopefully um, there's a couple hundred of you maybe hopefully still watching, uh, or if you're going to watch this after the fact, if you want to help us and you live in the state of Indiana, we're going to try to figure out what's the best way whether it involves PayPal, whatever, we'll handle the logistics, but we're going to try to figure out a way that um, that St. Jude's can get the $3 donation, and that, you know, and if it means that, I'll donate the three, I mean, we'll figure it out, but long story short, they'll get the $3, but if you can help, and you live in the Hoosier State, please reach me offline, let me know. 69 Minute Eargasm, please, and my YouTube channel, go to YouTube, and just search my name, Joel Gertner, there's a channel called Joel Gertner. That's mine. You'll be able to see other stuff exactly like this, scratch-offs, and also other stuff like cooking, unboxing, a lot of other fun with me and Squeeze. Please go to the YouTube channel and please subscribe. Please look at the podcast, listen to it, and please download it and subscribe to it if you like it. Rate it, comment, that kind of thing. We have a bunch of Illinois tickets, not just $20, but all told between two different trips to Illinois. We have something like $28. It's at least four tickets. It could be five or six. I have to look at it. But even bigger than this Indiana haul, later in the Midwest was this summer my Illinois haul. And the next time we join you on Quintessential Casino, it's going to be Illinois that we play. So be here for that. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday night. And the week ahead, I hope it's luckier than any lottery ticket could ever possibly be. Thanks for joining us.